Gold's going to keep rising. I believe we'll see 3,000 soon. There was an excellent hourly chart for Bitcoin. The Japanese yen has some very solid accumulation. I think we're still heading up on yen. Let's start with gold and silver. So I recommended silver. It was at a solid level. Silver did well. If you look at a lower time frame, the entry point was excellent with a tight stop. This was a powerful move a 10 to 15 to 1 on a strong daily chart. I also recommended gold. You have to be a bit more cautious with gold. As you can see, it's leaving consolidation. Gold's looking pretty good. Any consolidation of gold above 26.70 to 26.75 could very likely send it soaring. In my opinion, gold's going to keep rising. I believe we'll see 3,000 soon. And if the US market starts to drop, which it probably will, we'll likely see gold go even higher. Naturally, silver tends to pull gold along with it. Now, onto BTC. It's looking really good on the hourly chart for Bitcoin. I recommended Bitcoin too. Check this out. Excellent. A very important point. When looking at daily charts, always check the shorter time frames. But try not to go below the hourly chart for Bitcoin. The volatility can be wild and it'll just make you anxious. But if you switch to the hourly chart, you can set your stop loss orders confidently ride out the volatility and see how nicely the hourly chart moves. Today we broke the high and are pulling back a bit. This is going to be a super strong level. So take note. Now let's switch to Forex. What are we seeing? We clearly identified the level using the paranormal bar. The asset dropped sharply but quickly rose. That's always a good sign when the asset approaches a level. Watch closely for movement near the level. It could be a false breakout. It can also be something else, but pay attention. We clearly marked the level uh, with this bar. Now let's check out the 30 minute chart. See, if the asset makes another attempt to break this high, we could push even further upwards. You can see the asset is in a somewhat tricky zone up to 70,000. But with how Bitcoin's been moving lately, if the level at 67,950.68 holds, it could go higher. No need to wait for consolidation. That's exactly what I just mentioned. When the asset is moving, there's no need to wait for consolidation. Let me explain why. There are different breakout patterns. Some breakout patterns come with consolidation and some you have to trade straight away. Uh, yeah, with this kind of pattern, you can't jump in right away. You need to let the volatility calm down because it's high right now. We just saw an $800 to $900 move. This is bad volatility, so I'd wait here. But there are moments like this. Let me show you what happened with gold. When an asset slowly moves up and then breaks out, that's when you have to wait for the volatility to cool off, especially with Bitcoin. Seeing a $1,000 move in a single bar, uh, that's what we call bad volatility. So um, in this situation, just wait for it to settle a bit because volatility needs to decrease. Only then can you make your move. See, I laid out everything clearly on what could happen all in real time. When volatility falls and things calm down, that's when you go in for the breakout. There was a huge volume of trades, but it's not enough for Bitcoin because we don't know how far it will push. I don't fully trust the figures they're giving us. But let's move on. Euro. Naturally, I'm shorting the euro. I gave a recommendation to short euro today. Why? The asset is in a strong short zone. That's where we are, a solid short zone. And typically, when an asset enters such a zone, it should move. Let me show you something here. See, it's starting to trade next to this level with a small amplitude. And then you see it enters a clean zone. Here it is. The asset could easily move to one point. 0781. That's a decent distance. Uh, by the way, we just got a link. Uh, you can become a prop trader with our company and, and get funds to manage. The first program starts at $59, and I think you'll do really well. Uh, look, always focus on not just how much the asset moved, but how it moved. Uh, when the asset's volatility begins to ease upon entering the short zone, that's what you should notice. See, the asset is in a short zone now. Now, you need to keep an eye on it. You have a level here, a clearly marked level, and the asset has a good range of more than 100 points. So I'd watch how it behaves around this area. 
Remember this key point. Even after the asset has moved or moved quickly, the volatility needs to come down. That's what I said about the euro. Now NZD. Today, the NZD entered the short zone and then it got bought back. That's it. Remember one thing. When the asset re-enters a zone, whether long or short, you shouldn't touch it. So it's a waiting game. Let's move on to JPY. JPY has some very solid accumulation. I think we're still heading up on JPY. The 150 level is key, so make sure to add it to the list of the assets you trade. And don't forget, all assets need to be on your list. Every single one should be on paper. You can't just remove an asset if it suddenly doesn't play out. CHF. You should buy CHF. Take a look at it right now. See? Next, GBP. Look. GBP dropped right to that level. Every time an asset touches a level down to a point, you need to highlight it, and then you can work with it. Canadian dollar. Nothing for now. Oil. Uh, I'd be looking for a short trade. Here's why. You can take a position here. There's no escalation in the Middle East. None. So it's important to watch this level. I think we'll see a return here. There's no uh, tension between Iran and Israel right now. Things are calm. So oil could be a short below this level. Now, Ethereum. ETH is actually looking pretty good. Not as strong as Bitcoin, but still looking good. The zone is tricky, though. I wouldn't get involved at this point. You see, I'd only step in at this spot. But make sure it's on your list. If Ethereum exits this paranormal bar here, around 27.75, I'd go for it. Ethereum is looking solid. S&P is looking great. I read an interesting article today saying that a lot of companies are expecting better results. So there's a good chance we'll see the S&P climb even more. There's been no pullback at all, which is why I'm bullish on S&P, E-U-R, slash A-U-D. Check this out. Sometimes an asset just isn't ready to move. That's exactly what's happening here. There's no clear entry point. KID per JPY. We've got a solid level. Look closely. 108.85. It looks solid. Mexican peso. Keep an eye on it. We've entered a really strong long zone. EUR slash JPY isn't quite ready yet. 